kicker during extra points and field goals. And we're getting started here at Hard Rock Stadium. Canes and Hoos. Both teams, as we mentioned, coming off huge victories last week. Ganyard kind of pooches it there to Restrepo, who will field it at the 20. Cutting inside and taken down at about the 22-yard line. Tackle made by Paris Jones. Tyler Van Dyke back in the saddle today. ACC Rookie of the Year in 2021. Struggled with injuries last season. And Miami struggled as well. And this year, didn't play this past game against Clemson. He's been dealing with a nagging right-hand injury, but also a leg injury that helped keep him out. Yeah, later on in the season, later in the season, you just get banged up, right? That's part of the game of football. A.J. Allen in the backfield. He goes right up the middle. And Van Dyke, after a short gain of three yards, Tavon Kyle makes the tackle. Virginia showing blitz. Van Dyke now checking with the sideline. Van Dyke got time. Swings it out to Colby Young near the sticks. Will they give him a first down? Yes, they will. Yeah, a nice little short comeback route by Colby Young. Just an easy pitch and throw for Tyler Van Dyke. I like what Miami's doing right now. The first two plays soften up that defense, come back with a nice, easy, high percentage completion pass for your quarterback that missed last week's game. Four wide receivers out there after the eight-yard gain for the first down. Allen in the backfield. We could see a number of running backs for the University of Miami today. It's as healthy as they've been in that room. Nice stutter step there by Allen. Turns a loss into a gain, a gain of about one. Caleb Hardy takes him down. Yeah, you just look right there, you know, right tackle, um, Francis Mainoa gets beat with the inside move right there. He has to be able to extend that and give the running back a little bit more space to run. Miami's offense has been good this year, Orlando. Shannon Dawson has done a fantastic job with this particular group. Yeah, first year offensive coordinator really making the system gel from day one. Quick toss to the boundary, incomplete, intended for Restrepo. Right there, so those are one of those just rusty ones, right? You see Tyler Van Dyke just not on the same page with his safety valve, Xavier Restrepo. Normally, those guys hook up that easy little wide receiver screen to the outside. That's They do that in their sleep. So right there, you could tell a little rusty from not playing last week, Tyler Van Dyke. Third and long, Miami, 47% converting third downs this season. Restrepo in motion. Allen again in the backfield as he gets the start today. The transfer from Nebraska. Van Dyke, plenty of time. Launches one down the field, and it is caught. Oh, no, they're going to say incomplete. It was intended for Jacoby George. Could not hold on. Sam Westfall got in there and got a paw in the way. So Miami will be forced to punt. Yeah, great job by this Miami offensive line, running backs included, being able to pick up the all-out blitz right there by Virginia. But if you're Kobe Young, you, you look at the blitz right here. Miami's a lot of movement. That's what this Virginia defense is going to do. But Kobe Young, you've got to find a way to come down with that and make sure Jacoby George has to find a way to come down with that and make sure that he completes that th pass. Dylan Joyce to punt it. Ethan Davies lets it bounce. It touches a Miami player. And is it a Miami player? It might be the heel of a Virginia player. They're going to discuss this right now. The fumble recovery, if it is a fumble recovery, will be Mason Knapper. But yeah, it's going to be Virginia ball. It looked to me that it was a Miami player right off the top. 37 yard Bruce punt over the turn. So let's see here. No, it didn't touch anybody. Yeah, it didn't touch anybody right there. 
Just a, a bad bounce for Miami right there. And then right there, we're seeing Miami punt in game struggle a little bit. Last week, we, we saw that. That was the big key to Virginia getting that huge win last week against North Carolina. North Carolina struggled in the punting game, in the field position game. So hopefully that's corrected on special teams moving forward. Empty set here for Musket as he starts off a diamond formation to the left side. Quick toss. Completion there. Malik Washington pushes forward a nine-yard gain for Malik Washington, one of the leading receivers in the ACC. Tony Musket, the quarterback for the Virginia Cavaliers. Huge game last week. Yeah, you see, he loves to hook up with his roommate, Malik Washington, and, and those guys have formed a connection just in about seven months. It's unbelievable, so look for him to go to Malik Washington a lot today. Paris Jones in the backfield. Washington in motion. They fake it to Washington, to Jones on the left side, and Jones has enough for the first down. A two-yard gain. James Williams takes him down. That's what's going to be tough today for this Virginia defense, running in between the tackles on this Miami defense. It's going to be tough sledding all day as Miami is a fast team sideline to sideline. And tempo here for Virginia. Quick toss over the middle to Washington. And that one is incomplete. Rolling on the field is incomplete pass. Second down. To Corey Couch in coverage. Tony Musket again hurt in the fourth quarter of their opener against Tennessee. Missed a couple of games. Anthony Calandria played, and then he's been back for the last several weeks. Another quick toss on a slant there to Malik Washington, and that will be close to the sticks. It'll be just about a yard shy, a nine-yard gain. So far, I love what offensive coordinator Des Kitchens is doing. He's not giving a lot of reads to his quarterback and Tony Musket against this fast Miami defense. They hand it off to Jones on the left side, has a hole and picks up the first down as he gets into Miami territory. Paris Jones, the leader of that particular group, has a six-yard gain. Nice patient run, just one gap at a time, and taking it out the backside right there to be able to pick up a nice gain on the ground right there for Paris no, Jones. Good for the Mike Hollins now checks in for the first time for Virginia as they're on the move. Musket got plenty of time. Fires one to Malachi Fields, incomplete. Off the fingertips, Jaden Davis in coverage. Jaden Davis did a fantastic job last week against Bo Collins of Clemson, but we have a flag. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Number 44, defense, 15-yard penalty. Automatic, first down. And that's Miami stud freshman Reuben Bain, who, who was all-world this season, and particularly last week, but got caught there. Yeah, last week it was unbelievable, but this week right now, just going against right tackle Steen, and he just, just a little bit too much right there. He has to be able to lean off and make sure that he does not contact the quarterback's head right there. And Virginia now will have the ball inside the 35-yard line. Musket changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Coming with a delayed blitz. Musket in trouble, wrapped up and sacked by Francisco Maui Noah. A loss on the play for the University of Virginia. A five-yard loss after the sack by Maui Noah. Yeah, Maui Noah just coming right here off the edge, scraping, running the hump. And, you know, Miami's coverage on the back end doing a heck of a job staying sticky, forcing Tony Musket to hold on to that ball for extra seconds. And now Francisco Marino are getting that set. Officially a three-yard loss. Second and 13. Kobe Pace in the backfield to block. Quick toss over the middle. Incomplete. J.R. Wilson, who's a hoops player as well, a young player that they absolutely want to get more involved could not come up with the catch. Yeah, this coaching staff is excited about J.R. Wilson. They're trying to develop into the third wide receiver. But right there, just right in between his legs, he's got to find a way to come up with that, especially in a game like this, to make it a third and manageable situation. You don't want to be in these third and longs versus this Miami defense that is so fast and so athletically gifted. Third and 13, Virginia 37% conversion rate on third down. Musket throws to the boundary to Fields. Fields makes a man miss with a hesitation move, barreling over defenders and stretches out for the first down. 
Are you kidding me? Malachi Fields makes that catch, and you look at Jaden Davis, he looks like he has him dead to rights, but Malachi Fields being able to make an unbelievable play out there in space, using that big body frame, but also finishing at the end with some physicality to go get that first down for Virginia's offense. Jaden Davis whiffed on that particular tackle, longest play of the game thus far, 16-yard gain. Musket with the keeper, he's dangerous there. And he gains eight yards on that play. Cam Kitchens finally brings him down. So far, great job by offensive coordinator Des Kitchen. A lot of misdirection right there. The quarterback option. Uh, Miami's defensive ends, they're going to be fast flowing on the backside of the, of the plays and bending quick. So Tony Musket's going to have a lot of opportunities to pull that in the zone read. Last week, Musket averaged about eight oh yards of play right on those QB draws. Tenth play of the drive as coach Des Kitchings, the offensive coordinator for Virginia, in his bag at the moment. Musket has Washington in motion. They hand it off to Hollins. Hollins spins around and taken down at the six-yard line. A first down after a good gain there. Reuben Bain takes him down after the seven-yard gain. Yeah, the red zone monster last week. Hollins just again with that play. And Virginia with tempo right now. Virginia now again to Hollins. Hollins down to the two-yard line. A four-yard gain there. James Williams with the tackle. I like the game plan. Get up to the line of scrimmage. Keep on running. Keep on keeping this Miami defense off balance. And Hollins right up the middle with very little resistance gets the touchdown. Virginia on the board first here at Hard Rock. Des Kitchens just shows that, hey, we're not going to change what we did. We found success. We had three rushing touchdowns last week in the red area with Mike Holland. So we're going to continue to feed off of that and build upon that. A great job. Three straight runs right there inside the 15 by this Virginia offense. Seven runs, five passes for Virginia. Capped off by a Hollins touchdown. The extra point is up and good. Mike Hollins. This man has overcome a lot of adversity, tragedy, and is flourishing at the moment for Virginia. Struggling? Just keep it simple. You know, UVA has found a way to find success running the football in the red area, and they continue to press that button once they get down there. So great job by offensive coordinator Des Kitchen. Ray Ray Joseph, the freshman, breaks loose and taken down by Ganyard near the 40-yard line. 31-yard return for the freshman. They love this kid. This is a guy that they want to see more of each and every week from Miami Edison. Yeah, the freshman just showing great vision, puts his foot in the ground, makes a couple guys miss. But, man, that's what it is. It's all about timing when you get in the open field and when you're returning kicks. Great job right there by the young man. A.J. Allen in the backfield. along with Brashard Smith. They love running him. You saw a big run last week from him. Allen on the left side. Picks up a couple of yards. Cohen King tackles Allen after a gain of about four. Yeah, nice back to the basics play right there. Just a counter OT pulling Cooper and Maui Noah and letting those big boys get out there in front of A.J. Allen and get an opportunity to be, bring some physicality to the game. Two tight ends set for Miami. Second and six. Van Dyke hands it off again. Room to run there. Enough for the first down as A.J. Allen plows forward for a first down. Eight-yard gain for Allen. Love this. You're going to see tight end Aurora just lead up in that hole. But A.J. Allen again showing that tough physical run. Two plays, two nice gains for this Canes offense. Miami in Virginia territory now. Elijah Arroyo, who came back last week, in at the H-back position. Another handoff to the left side. A.J. Allen again, and James Jackson, who made that big interception last week for Virginia against North Carolina, makes the tackle on that particular play. And right now, you can tell Miami, right? I mean, TVD missed last week's game. Coach 
Dawson, you know, calling this game very heavy run package in 12 personnel, having two tight ends out there in the last couple plays. All runs for Miami at the moment. Second and seven. And here's another run. Allen breaking loose, getting near the sticks, just shy of the first down. It'll be a six yard gain. But A.J. Allen been the workhorse thus far. Yeah, you know, this Miami running back room, very deep. You know, Tim Harris does a heck of a job coaching this group up. But A.J. Allen does an even better job of continue to show patience, find the hole, and use his explosive ability. Jared Harrison Hunt, the defensive lineman, is now checked in on offense as Mark Fletcher, the freshman, who had been fantastic to start the season, now back from injury. He's in the backfield, so a heavy set for Miami. Third and one. They hand it off to Fletcher. He pushes forward, picks up the first down easily after a four-yard gain. An offensive lineman by trade, Mario Cristobal, and Man, are they absolutely doing a fantastic job running the ball in this drive. Yeah, you run the ball until a team does not want you to run anymore. And these runs so far, George, have been five, six yards. But later on, those turn into 10, 12 yards because of the body blows you're able to deliver. Rashard Smith and Mark Flesh Fletcher now in the backfield. First and 10. Van Dyke back to pass all day. Launches one down the field. It is intercepted by Sam Westfall a poor pass there by Tyler Van Dyke intended for Xavier Restrepo and he just didn't have enough on that one yeah I don't know if the ball came off his hands the wrong way or his grip was off but Restrepo does a heck of a job of beating Westfield um, TVD has to be able to lead him a little bit better right there and take better care of the football to not end up in an in a interception right there You know, he goes out and he starts stock blocking. I love the play call, but TVD has to be able to push that ball a little bit further down the field and not give Sam Westfall an opportunity of picking it off right there. Great counter to the run game, but TVD has to be better with the throw right there. Jack Grease in as the fullback. They hand it off to Paris Jones. Virginia starts their drive there, and Jones has stood up at the 11-yard line. A one-yard gain. Jafari Harvey there to take him down along with Leonard Taylor. Nice little wrinkle right there, but I don't anticipate much more by Virginia trying to run up the middle on this Miami defense. Second and nine. Another handoff to Jones, and Jones gets near the first down marker. They'll say yes. They'll say a first down. Let's check in with Maryland. Miami D-line, Jason Taylor. His coaching message after Virginia's touchdown was, wake up, you know what's coming. This is what we expected. We have to execute better. First and 10 for Virginia. They are also running the ball effectively, this time to Hollins down the sideline. And he's going to be close to the first down as well, perhaps about a yard shy. Good block there by Malachi Fields after the nine-yard gain. The big fella out on the perimeter blocking for his running back. Yeah, this Virginia offense continues to take advantage of the alleys right outside the tackle box to that inside slot receiver. And those running lanes have been great for them today so far. So look for Miami to counter that with some blitzes coming from the outside edge as this game goes along. Second and one, handoff to Hollins. And he's going to be close to the marker and they're going to give him enough for the first down as he pushes forward Leonard Taylor at the point of attack for Miami but not enough to stop him for the first down yeah Leonard Taylor does a great job of getting penetration but he has to make sure that he gets Mike Do Hollins down he can't let him fight for those extra yards right there Grant Mish in the backfield now the tight end has the fullback Kobe Pace takes a snap on the left side a one yard gain all three running backs have played for Virginia Corey flag takes down pace yeah when you're playing against a defense like this all of your running backs are going to play George this is one of those body bag games where you have to be able to be physical and be able to roll those running backs in and out so not a shocker that we with three minutes left in the first quarter we've seen multiple running backs play for this UVA offense second and nine Tony Musket, two-time All-Big South player at Monmouth, transferred to Virginia. Musket 
to the boundary. And a catch there made by J.R. Wilson. Going to be shy of the first down, but it'll be third and manageable coming up after Cam Kitchen's tackle. J.R. Wilson, great job him and Tony Musket hooking up right now. So far, Miami's defense has taken the big plays away from Malik Washington and Manakai Fields, but J.R. Wilson has found some success, as we see with him and Tony Musket. Third Couple catches already on today's game. Third and three for Virginia. The crowd trying to get amped up here for the Canes. Washington in motion. Musket looking for a second pass of this drive. Completes it to Malik Washington for the first down. A five-yard gain for Malik Washington, one of the best receivers in the ACC. A five-yard gain, but a heck of a route. Malik Washington continues to show you why he has so much receptions and why he's one of the best players in the ACC. I continue to say, him and Tony Musket moving in, getting to Virginia in early January, those guys becoming roommates, I think really has accelerated the chemistry of that duo. Last week, Malik Washington, 12 catches for 115 yards and a touchdown in the upset victory against North Carolina. Washington in motion there. Musket got time. Now he's going to step up. Pressure coming, and he's taken down. It'll be a sack officially. Reuben Bain is there. The young freshman phenom from Miami, from Miami Central High School. And you want to talk about a man-child, that kid. And he's got the lineage. Uncle Tolbert Bain played for the U as well. Yeah, a sack by Reuben Bain right there. But that sack, honestly, George, it deserves to, everybody on the defense deserves to be able to get a sack in the column on that one because there was excellent coverage on the back end that forced Tony Musket to hold on to the ball for extra seconds. Ninth play of the drive. Blake Steen checks in at right tackle for Virginia. Virginia at the 41-yard line. Musket. Quarterback draw. He's dangerous there, and excellent job there by Miami tripping him up. Jaden Wayne, the freshman for the University of Miami from Tacoma, Washington, originally played at IMG, only a two yard game. Yeah, you know, this is what Coach Gidry talked about defensive coordinator, those quarterback call it up and design quarterback draws. So a heck of a job of Miami's defense understanding the situation and being able to collapse that, those holes and not give up anything to force a third and long right now. Third and 10 from the 43-yard line. Virginia three for three on third downs. Play action. Pocket collapsing and batted down at the line of scrimmage. Musket also took a hit on that play. And Miami holds Reuben Bain with the pressure there. This young man, he is incredible to watch. I mean, is there another level? Is there something that this young man cannot do? Number five Miami. is now number 47 for Miami. Miami blitzes right there and is able to get off the field. Virginia has to find a way to stay out of those third and long situations because the whole entire playbook is up for this Miami defense. How about Bain not only getting the pressure, but also getting the tip on that play too? Yeah, young man's a stud, George. Rashard Smith to field it for Miami. Let's it bounce near the 20, and Virginia will down it at about the 21 or 22-yard line. Aiden Livingston will down it. Miami starting their third drive at the 21-yard line. They have struck out a couple of times, including a turnover on their most recent drive by Tyler Van Dyke. Mark Fletcher in the backfield now, the freshman. And they hand it off, and Fletcher swallowed up immediately in the backfield. It'll be a one-yard loss. This Virginia defensive line, they do a heck of a job with movement and being able to use their pad level as well. That's been the strength of this defense. It's their D tackles and the movement that their defensive line is able to consistently get up uh, and pressure. Second and 11 for Miami from their own 20. Van Dyke's last three passes, two incompletions and an interception. And they hand it off again. Fletcher makes a man miss, cutting back inside. And you see why they love that young man. James Jackson missed the tackle on that one on the hesitation move, a nine-yard gain for Fletcher. Yeah, James Jackson's not no, no person that out there, like a young player. He's played a lot of football. Normally he makes that play, but you see Mark Fletcher Jr. just explosive in the open field, being able to put his foot in the ground and make him miss right there. Miami brings in an extra offensive lineman. 81 is not Jared Jer Harrison Hunt. It is McCoy who is checking in. Matthew McCoy switches jersey numbers.
to be on the field. Third and one. They toss it to Fletcher. He can't hold on. He picks it up. And he's going to lose yardage on that play. Not ideal for the University of Miami. Fourth down. And the punt unit will be coming out. I like the thought process to get to the edge, but I don't like the pitch. You, this is something that you don't typically run with Tyler Van Dyke. Time out. Especially a Virginia player. We have an injured player there. Tavon Kyle is the player that is injured as Tony Elliott comes out to check on him. Hopefully we'll have an update here. 22 yard line after Davies Fair caught it there. An update on Tavon Kyle from Virginia. Not an injury. Right contact fell out of his eye. <laughs> He's good to go as the contact is now back in his eye. I feel his pain, George. I was in the 1% in the of the world. My left eye was negative 11 until I had eye surgery a couple years ago. And sometimes those contacts would pop out and I would have to go down and take a knee and get out the game. Virginia doing a nice job running the ball thus far. A pop pass there to Malik Washington as he tries to get to the edge. We'll pick up about five or six yards on that play. Des Kitchen staying true to who this team has become over the last couple weeks, running the ball in the alley right there again. Again, Virginia 54 yards rushing. Miami gives up about 80 total in a game. And another run there, this time by Kobe Pace. He'll be about a yard shy of the first down as James Williams tackles him for Miami. The patience and Kobe Pace that's finding that backside gap to find some success to bring up third and one. And it looks like we're going to have whistles on this one as everybody was moving pretty early. Please reset the play clock to 25 seconds. Official was not in position prior to the snap. Third down. I like the plan so far by Virginia. They've been able to keep Miami off balance defensively where Miami hasn't really known what's coming next. They've mixed in some tempo and found some success early in this game. Number 95 is checked in for Virginia. That is actually Houston Curry, another offensive lineman. So they're matching Miami's strategy themselves. UVA three of four on third downs. Third and one here. Miami crowding the line of scrimmage. Washington in motion. They hand it off up the middle and Pace is taken down in the backfield. Francisco Maui Noah making another play for the University of Miami, a two yard loss. Asked Mario Cristobal about Francisco earlier in this week, and he talks about how much he's lights out, and, and he talked about his instincts. And right there, you see the instance. He just gets up and goes. If he does not trigger as fast as he just triggered, that play might find success and end up in a first down. But because of his physicality, it ends up in fourth. First three and out for Virginia. Sparks with the punt. Richard Smith will fair catch it for Miami at the 21-yard line. Virginia stalls out there, a 51-yard punt. Miami to drive in a moment. Yeah, Miami, Miami saw that up close. Yeah, he just gets better and better each and every week, George. Miami begins their drive here. Van Dyke, quick toss towards the sideline to Jacoby George. George will pick up about three yards there. Josh Ahern brings him down. Interesting play call right there by offensive coordinator Shannon Dawson, running that into the boundary. You would think that you would want to run that to the field to just give Jacoby George a little bit more space to operate outside on the perimeter. Second and seven for the Canes, who have not looked great thus far in Van Dyke's return. Two punts and an interception on their first three drives. Restrepo in the slot. Handed off up the middle to A.J. Allen, pushing the pile forward for another couple of yards. It'll make it third and manageable as Mark, or excuse me, Makai Buchanan brings him down. So far in this game, offensively, it looks like Miami has kind of struggled with their identity. Are we an outside zone running team? Are we an inside zone running team? Taking shots when it necessarily don't have to. Let's see what they do right here in this third and very manageable with the whole entire playbook up. Third and three from their own 28. Miami one of three on third downs. McCormick in motion. Van Dyke checking with the sideline. Crowd a little restless at the moment. Got time. Van Dyke flings it out to the flat. Incomplete. Batted down by Famui. And the crowd here is not loving it, but the six-year senior from Honolulu, Hawaii, with a play there. And Miami struggles on offense continue. Van Dyke, two of six for 11 yards. 
Yeah, and credit to this Virginia defense, just being very good on the back end in coverage and not giving Tyler Van Dyke anywhere to go with the football. He looks to check it down right there, and as you saw, the batted ball at the line of scrimmage. Dylan Joyce to punt it again, Ethan Davies to field it. He's backtracking near the 20-yard line, and it bounces out of bounds near the 25-yard line. It'll be marked at the 24. And Virginia will take over after 47-yard punt. Orlando Franklin, Marilyn Payne with you here. Orlando, they used your offensive lineman picture, not your current picture where you've dropped 110 pounds. Yeah, our producer, Bob, not showing any love, worked hard to drop 100 pounds, and he just puts up <laughs> 330 Orlando. Bain with the pressure on Musket, but he completes the pass to Washington, who slips a tackle. He's heading down the sideline. Plenty of room to run and taken down by Takori Couch, deep in Miami territory, inside the red zone. A 63-yard gain for Virginia. We have an injured player on the field. Miami player. It looks to be Takori Couch who made the tackle on Malik Washington. He's down on one knee. Yeah, Tony Musket shows you what he is all about and what this Virginia team has really been all about. Staying in there with that pressure by Bain, understanding he's going to get hit, but delivers an unbelievable ball. And you see Malik Washington and why he's been so good in ACC football play right there with the run after the catch. Couch walking off the field with Coach Cristobal on his own power. That's a good sign. But a big play there against Lance Guidry's defense. Excellent job there by Des Kitchings, the offensive coordinator for Virginia. Yeah, hard play action, getting Tony Musket out there in space. You know, talking to Des Kitchens this week, he said that Tony Musket, in order for this offense to have continued success, Tony Musket has to use his legs. We just saw him use his legs to make a throw right there. Harris Jones in the backfield, along with Grant Mish as the up man. Musket, play action. Looking for Mish, the tight end, and then he throws it out of bounds. Smartly throwing it out of bounds. Jafari Harvey with the pressure. Let's check in with Maryland. Tony Elliott really praised Tony Musket for the way that he has become more vocal and involved emotionally as a leader, as he's been able to also prove himself on the field as a leader. Tony Elliott saying that Musket has really wanted to be that guy who does it first on the field, and now he is the emotional leader at quarterback for the Hoos. Thank you, Maryland. By the way, that pass to Washington, the second longest pass play of the season for Virginia. Musket showing his toughness and smarts there. Another pass to Washington towards the sideline. A short pickup there. Damari Brown takes him down after a six-yard gain. The freshman from Miami at corner. But Tony Musket, Orlando, is playing with a busted AC joint on his non-throwing shoulder. Yeah, and that's what, you know, you look at this Virginia team, how they have faced adversity this year. Tony Musket makes this team better because of his toughness. He will require surgery at the end of the season, but yet this guy goes out there week in, week out, and brings the physicality to oppose the team's defense. Third and four for Virginia. Musket. Got time. It's batted down. Intended for Grant Mish. Francisco Maui Noah, another play for the University of Miami. Where would they be without him today? Um, then I'll tell you what, that would have been a touchdown without him right there because the wide receiver has a step right there. But Francisco Maui Noah, unbelievable getting his hands up right there at the last second. I mean, this defense flies around. The guys continue to make play after play for this deep Miami defense. Check that. It was Cam Kitchens, number five, not 51. They're All-American preseason player. 22-yard field goal attempt for Will Betridge. And the kick is up and good. 10-0 Virginia. And they got there because of this play to Malik Washington. Yeah, unbelievable job by Tony Musket right there, just leading a long pass. And Malik Washington doing the rest with his legs to put Virginia up 10-0. Nothing lead as he pops one up. Ray Ray Joseph, but a big return earlier. The freshman gets gang tackled inside the 30 yard line. Tackle made by Grady Brosterhouse. 
And now for today's Aflac trivia question. How many Heisman Trophy winners have played for the Miami Hurricanes, Mr. Hurricane? Mm. Heisman Trophy winners? So I, I think I know the answer. I think I know the answer, too. Go ahead. Oh, man. Could I, I'll go with three. OK. What All are right. you going with, George? I'll tell you in a second here, because it's Henry Parrish who has checked in for Miami. Van Dyke only 11 yards in the air. Miami going through running backs here. Van Dyke back to pass. Got time, finds his man Restrepo. Restrepo breaks a couple of tackles, spins around and gets into Virginia territory. And that's his safety valve as Caleb Hardy takes him down. The freshman for Virginia, a 25 yard gain. A missed tackle there by Jonas Senker. Yeah, starts with, with the protection up front, but Restrepo just doing great right there. Now they hand off quickly on tempo to Henry Parrish, Famui with the tackle after the short game. Yeah, on the previous play, Restrepo just sits down in the zone to hook up with Tyler Van Dyke to create an explosive play. So good job right there. Second and six for Van Dyke and company as they are now in Virginia territory at the 44. Van Dyke changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Arroyo now out in the slot, the tight end. Van Dyke and the Canes need to get something going here on offense. Whistles on the field as a flag is there, and it'll be a false start on Miami. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 80, offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. And there's Elijah Arroyo. Is he just kind of in an unfamiliar place as he shifted out to the slot, in your opinion? No, there's no excuse for that. You're playing at home. You have to be able to look at the football and not hurt your football team right there. I think it's because he hasn't played a lot of snaps, but he has to be able to find success out there because Miami wants to live in their 11 personnel with three wide receivers on the field. Brashard Smith and A.J. Allen in the backfield. A quick toss out on a screen to Smith, and Smith with some room to run. Gets down to the 40-yard line. Cam Robinson brings him down. And now that will make it third and short for Miami. A good block there by Xavier Restrepo. Yeah, talking to offensive coordinator Shannon Dawson, he talked about Rashard Smith and, and just his playmaking ability. He used to play Wildcat quarterback in high school. He's the guy that you have to find plays in the course of a game to force the ball to him because of how good that young man is in space. The freshman Ray Ray Joseph checks in. We've seen him on kick and punt returns. Van Dyke drops back to Restrepo, pops in the air, but able to haul it in, and enough for the first down. Woo! Took his eye off it for a second, but able to haul it in. Excellent play there. A very interesting play. Miami goes five wide, trusts their quarterback, TBD, but Restrepo has to double catch it. Great concentration for him right there to be able to haul that one in and move the chains on third down. Another first down, Miami at the Virginia 37-yard line. Brashard Smith in the backfield is the lone back. This is the longest drive of the day for Miami. They hand off to Smith. As you mentioned, a Wildcat quarterback can't really get past the line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard on that one as Tavon Kyle for Virginia brings him down. Virginia has done a great job today in just understanding what Miami likes to do, but reading their keys to be able to make plays like that. So this Virginia defense is powered by that defensive line and being able to get penetration, and they've done their job so far today. They'll give him two officially, second and eight. Virginia showing blitz, here they come, and Allen can't get the edge there. Paul Akiri, who made a monster play in that North Carolina game at the end, makes the play there for Virginia. Yeah, Virginia's been super aggressive blitzing today, blitzing Kyle off the edge right there. But Akiri, like you said, you know, that's a guy that continues to play more and more snaps coming back from an injury, and he's getting more and more comfortable out there. Third and eight for Tyler Van Dyke and company. Mark Fletcher in the backfield. Miami's freshman from American Heritage. Van Dyke got all day to throw. Tosses it to Fletcher, and Fletcher taken down near the 30. Cam Robinson again making a play. The freshman from Essex High School in Virginia. Six-yard gain 
and not enough and the crowd not feeling it here at Hard Rock. Miami hasn't found enough success running the football to pressure this defense into trying to come down to, to stop the run. On that third and long right there, everybody on the back end for Virginia, very sticky in coverage, doing a, a marvelous job of not giving Tyler Van Dyke anywhere to go with the football down the field. 47-yard kick for Borregales for Miami. He's 12 of 13 on the year. The kick is up, and it is good. And Miami's sure-footed kicker gets them on the board. Little more than four minutes to go. It's on their heels, not letting them know what's coming next, and they have found success. Let's take a look at the ACC standings at the moment. Miami with a couple of losses in conference with that big win against Clemson last week. And Virginia with the same conference record, but they had struggled, obviously, early this season and found a couple of wins against William and & Mary and the huge win, a top-10 road win for the first time in program history against their biggest rival, arguably, or maybe their second biggest rival in North Carolina. Musket hands it off with room to run up the middle. It's Mike Hollins for a good gain there. Jafari Harvey after the three-yard gain by Hollins. They hurry up here. Harvey with the tackle. Musket on the move. Tosses it to the boundary to Gibson. Gibson makes a man miss. And to Corey Couch slams him down. Out of bounds. A missed tackle there by Daryl Porter Jr., who has been really good for the University of Miami this year. Yeah, but the missed tackles is what's going to kill this defense because that right there, if Porter Jr. is able to get him down, it's a tackle for a loss instead of a third and very manageable two right now that we see. Five-yard gain, third and two. Musket changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Malik Washington not on the field at the moment. Gibson in motion. They hand it off right up the gut. And a first down by Mike Hollins. Another missed tackle, this time by K.J. Cloud. He has him dead to rights. Malik Hollins in the backfield. He misses that, and now the chains move because of it. Coach Gidry must be furious right now with this Miami defense because a lot of missed opportunities. First down for Virginia at their own 37-yard line. Musket pressure coming, throws it to Malachi Fields. He spins around and picks up six yards on that particular play. K.J. Cloyd, who missed that tackle earlier, gets him down there. Seven-yard gain. Now, right now, this Virginia offense is doing a really good job. You know, some hard play action plays, a little bit of running in between the tackles, nice easy throws for Tony Musket, not trying to go down the field on a fast defense, just taking what the defense has given them. Second and three for Musket. Washington back on the field in motion. They hand it off to Hollins, dancing in the backfield. Will be shy of the first down marker by about a yard and a half. Jaden Wayne and Reuben Bain, the two freshmen for Miami, collide on the tackle. This is where it gets interesting, right, for, for Virginia. These third and ones. You know, if I'm Coach Kitchens, I'm trying to take a shot right here because Miami is going to have to try to sell out to stop the run because they haven't stopped the run at all today. So let's. it's going to be very interesting to see what Virginia does right now. And number 95, Houston Curry, checks in. An extra offensive lineman, UVA on third down. They were three for three to start, one of four since. And a timeout on the field for Miami. Timeout, Miami, that's their first charge timeout of the half, 30-second timeout. And now for today's AFLAC trivia answer. So I thought two, Gino Toretta and Vinny Testaverde. You said three, how many Heisman Trophy winners for Miami? And there it is. Your boy is right. Two. There you go. 
I mean, I also have a but, few years on you here. You know what I mean? But I also love that you never say your answer over air, so we don't even know if you really knew it was two. And That's then you fair. get the card, and then you're like, oh, I thought it was two. That's but, fair. I mean, That's did, you, fair. did you really think it was two? I did. I did. Oh, okay. I did. I also grew okay. up watching those guys. I'll give it to you. I'll give you it to you. You were in Canada in diapers back then. <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> We got a big third down here now. Two tight ends for Virginia. Miami with a lot of lineage at quarterback and many other positions as well. Defense in particular. Let's see if their defense can stop Virginia here. Musket sidearms to Washington. And he's got enough for the first down. Jaden Davis brings him down. And Malik Washington, man, if you didn't know who he was coming into this game, you know now, and you know why he's one of the best receivers in the ACC. Yeah, another beautiful call by offensive coordinator Des Kitchens. Puts Malik Washington in a little short motion to see if it's man or zone coverage, and he's able to outflank the quarterback to make, get an easy catch right there to move the chains. Ball on the 49-yard line. Paris Jones trying to spin out of trouble. will lose yardage there. Paris Jones, the six-year senior from Alexandria, Virginia. Corey Flagg, who made the monster stop against Cade Klubnick and Clemson last week on the play there. Washington, seven catches, by the way, for 102 timeout, yards. Virginia, that's their first charge timeout of the half. 30-second timeout. Virginia will talk things over here. Yeah, you just mentioned Corey Flagg Jr. Just a great job by him running on the backside and chasing that play down right there to be able to have a tackle for a loss. That's a want to. That's an effort play, right? If you're Miami, you find yourself down right now to Virginia by seven right before the half. Guys have to step up and put it on the line to assure that Virginia doesn't score any more points before the half. Corey Flagg Jr. from Houston, Texas. When we were talking to Lance Kidry and Mario Cristobal, they were talking about him in such glowing fashion. They talked about how, he, you know, he was dealing with an injury in the spring, a foot injury, but he's played multiple positions for them. And that play last week, as I mentioned, just played it perfectly. Four wide receivers here now for Virginia on second and 13. Ball on the 46-yard line. Musket. Quarterback draw, and he's taken down. It's going to be a loss on the play of two yards. Branson Dean, the transfer from Purdue, in there to make the stop. Great job. Just, you know, when you don't get to the quarterback, and you see the quarterback pull it down, being able to extend his arms and get off the block right there. Right now, so far, the Miami defense has been really good with the quarterback draw for Virginia today. Third sack for Miami. One last play before the half for Musket. Got time, he's directing traffic. Now he's in trouble. And a dangerous play there as Ruben Bain and Francisco Maui Noah take him down for a huge loss. He almost cost them a turnover there. I'm sure Tony Elliott and company are going to have a conversation with their quarterback after that nine-yard loss. Yeah, great job. The first half ties a season low in any half. Malik Washington back there to receive for Virginia and he has been fantastic today. The ball sails through the end zone and Virginia will begin their next drive on their own 25. Let's check in with Maryland. Tony Elliott said Miami is settling in and they're controlling us a little more on defense like I expected they might. He says the cat and mouse game is over. It's going to come down to physicality for our O-line against their D-line. He said they're starting to bring more pressure and we are struggling against that. But Tony Elliott says, I'm definitely not going to cry about being up seven here at Miami. Thank you, Maryland. There's always something a coach can nitpick for sure. That's the game of football. But Virginia in control at the moment, doing a really good job in this contest. A quick dump down to Paris Jones, incomplete. Musket was looking around, went through his progressions, found his running back, but skipped it to him. Talking to Des Kitchens this week, he talked about Tony Muskett because he typically finds Malik Washington in Malachi Fields, and they don't want him to skip from progression to find his guy. So right there, you see him get through the whole entire progression and not be able to find anywhere to go with the football. Here's the QB comparison you see there. Muskett doing a better job thus far. Virginia on the right side. Francisco Maui Noah with the tackle of Paris Jones after a two-yard gain. And Miami putting Virginia in a third and long situation. 
Yeah, two great plays to start this second half for Coach Guidry's defense. You know, this Miami defense comes out, plays great coverage, and is able to force a third and eight right now. This is a, one of the biggest plays of the day for this defense right now, George. Mike Collins in the backfield, third and eight from the 27-yard line. Musket, pressure coming. Incomplete as he sidearms one intended for Malik Washington to Corey Couch with a great job there in coverage and Virginia will be forced to punt. When you need a big play, you got to go to big 44. Ruben Bain Number just absolutely nine, dominates and forces Tony Musket to, to be off schedule and a little off target with that pass to get this defense off the field. Ray Ray Joseph to field it. He is number five normally wearing 47 because of the double number situation. That was UVA's second three and out today. Sparks with the punt. It bounces, headed towards the sideline, takes a Miami bounce there, and goes out of bounds at the 35, 36 yard line, we'll call it. 37 yard punt, no return. Player spotlight here presented by Carvana. And our player spotlight is the man you just mentioned, Orlando, Ruben Bain. This young man is just unbelievable, and he continues to show that, man, I'm not a freshman. I might be a freshman, but I certainly don't play like it. He gets the job done for this defense. Defense did their job. Now Miami's offense has to go out there and take care of business on this drive. Van Dyke dropping back, steps up in the pocket, flings one to the sideline to A.J. Allen. Allen puts his head down, lowers the shoulder, and picks up a nice chunk of change there. Cohen King with the tackle on the boundary after a six-yard gain. You mentioned Bain a second ago as he's our spotlight player brought to you by Carvana. He's the ACC Defensive Lineman of the Week. This past week, eight tackles, two sacks, and a forced fumble against Clemson, and the ACC Rookie of the Week as well. Second and four for Miami. Haven't seen a lot of pressure from Virginia. And Miami now taking advantage of his A.J. Allen. Tripped up by the turf monster after a first down. Gets into Virginia territory. We've seen a lot of A.J. Allen. A nine-yard gain for him. We have an injured player on the field. Elijah Royo is kind of limping off the field at the moment for Miami. Yeah, A.J. Allen, man. Find two defenders, split two defenders. You hope that Aurora is going to be OK as we see him limping, because that would be a big blow for this offense that loves to play in their 11 package with one tight end out there on the field. Miami on the move. Van Dyke sidearms it to Jacoby George. Hesitates there, makes a man miss. And he's taken down at the 41-yard line. He'll be about two yards shy of the first down. Missed tackle by Cohen King, the six-year senior from Virginia. If Miami's going to get back into this game or have an opportunity of winning, it's going to be on the backs of guys like Jacoby George. He shows that out in the open space, not one guy is going to be able to tackle this guy. He's too elusive, he's too explosive, and he understands the game of football too well, George. They'll give him nine yards, second and one. Van Dyke in the sun. A lot of shade here because of the way the stadium is configured. Van Dyke to the boundary, and it gets tipped. Looks like Jonas Sanker could have gotten a paw on that one. That's their stud, right? That's their stud free safety, Jonas Sanker. They love to keep him around the line of scrimmage. He does a great job of elevating right there, being able to get some fingertips on that ball because that, that would have been a first down. And, and Jacoby George would have had room to run for sure on that sideline. Two tight ends in there, McCormick and Riley Williams for the Canes on third and one. And they hand it off. And a first down there for Miami. Sanker on the tackle after a three-yard gain by A.J. Allen, who's been a workhorse for Miami today. I love that play right there, George. It's not fancy. There's not a lot of things moving parts to it. It's just letting your offensive line be physical and also letting your young running back in A.J. Allen go and get that first down for you. Miami on the 37-yard line of Virginia. Van Dyke, his first game back off of injury, got all day to throw. And he throws it to the sideline. It is complete there to Cam McCormick, the tight end. He picks up the first down. A gain of 11. I think we got a little bit of chirping going down. 
right now on the field. But TVD showing you that he's played a lot of football, right? Virginia has done a heck of a job of not allowing these Miami wide receivers to get past them on the back end and force TVD to find the check down. And right now on this drive, Tyler Van Dyke being surgical with the football, finding that check down every single time and letting wide receivers and running backs go make plays for him. Taking what the defense gives him. The crowd kind of holding their breath a little bit as Allen is in the backfield because they want him to launch it down the field, but they're playing smart at the moment. Allen, plenty of room to run. Hurdles a defender and heads it to the end zone. Backs his way in for the touchdown. A.J. Allen, 26 yards for the score as he leapfrogged Jonas Senker. I talked about the defense going out there, getting their job down with the three and out, but this drive, A.J. Allen just gets it done. Play after play, hurdling Jonas Sanker. That's their big play guy for this Virginia defense, but A.J. Allen putting this team on their back to help almost tie this thing up. Assuming we make this extra point. Miami makes this extra point. For Regalas, the extra point is up and good. And it's all knotted up at 10 apiece. Tyler Van Dyke struggled in the... George Sedano, Orlando Franklin, Marilyn Payne with you here at Hard Rock Stadium. Tied up at 10 apiece. Borregales kicks it over the head of Malik Washington, sails through the end zone, and Virginia will begin their next drive at the 25-yard line. But Miami finally punches it in. Look at this leap here. What athleticism by A.J. Allen. This is an unbelievable job. I mean, typically you see a guy leap and he falls because he's off balance. But A.J. Allen shows how athletic that body frame is. Just an unbelievable job by him. That whole drive was all him. Multiple runs by that young man being able to find that end zone again. There's A.J. Allen. Miami's first five drives, 99 yards, three points. That last drive, 64 yards and seven points. Virginia trying to answer. Musket is intercepted! A house call, pick six for Cam Kitchens. And just like that, Miami takes the lead here at home. And that's complimentary football, right? When the offense goes down the field and they go take care of business, now what is the defense going to do? You rely on your All-American and Cam Kitchens, and he does a great job of just stepping right in front of that one and just taking it to the house. Very easy read for him. J.R. Wilson wasn't able to connect, but, I mean, this is Miami's football when it's at its best. Defense from the second half, three and out. Offense goes down, scores. Defense, huge turnover, adds more points to the board. Borregales for the extra point. It's up and good. The last two plays for Miami, a rushing touchdown by A.J. Allen of 26 yards and a pink six. This team is playing complimentary football right now. The offense is feeding off of the defense and vice versa. Great job. Orlando. Yeah, Miami's defense found a way to get it done. Coach Guidry, unbelievable second half adjustments. Virginia has been great with capitalizing in their short passing game. So what do you do? You adjust, you blitz, but also tell your DBs that that ball is going to come out quick so you can react immediately when the wide receivers put their legs in the ground because Tony Musket's not going to have an opportunity to throw the ball down the field. What are you telling your team if you're Tony Elliott? Well, we got to get back to the basics, get back to that first drive, keep this Miami defense on their heels. That first drive was 12 plays, seven runs, five passes, and they had some tempo. So if you're Coach Kitchens, you got to get back to that call in the game like that. But if you're Tony Elliott, your whole entire team has to get out here and find a way to play complimentary football in the second half. Sunday, the ACC Women's Soccer Championship gets underway with first round matches at 6 and 8 Eastern once again from the Schlen Stadium at Wacomed Soccer Park in Cary, North Carolina. Tuesday, the field hockey quarterfinals begin with semifinals on Wednesday. Coverage starts at 1 Eastern both days. ACC Network is the home for the ACC Championships.
Quick toss to the boundary there to Malachi Fields. Close to the first down, Jaden Davis in coverage. And he's a big target, Orlando, so if you're going to throw it up, Malik Washington is certainly great. Malachi is right there as far as a tandem. Yeah, and that big body frame. And they get him the first down there. They're going to give him enough yardage to give him the first down. Hand off to Kobe Pace, who bounces it out to the outside. Picks up. Nice chunk of change. Corey Flagg drags him down from behind. And that's Virginia getting back to the basics. A nice out route to the sideline, but also running the alley right there with Pace, finding that success that you found earlier in the game. A seven-yard gain for Pace. Good call there, partner, as they certainly have gotten back to their bread and butter. Short gain there, maybe about a yard or so. Flag again in on the tackle for Miami, a native of Houston, Texas. I always get very interested in these third and shorts with Virginia because we saw the tush push last week that the Philadelphia Eagles do. And it looks like they might be getting ready to do it right now with um, Brosterhouse. Brosterhouse. Brady Brosterhouse is their <laughs> tush push guy on third and one. Brosterhouse, 6'2, 210, a sophomore from Weddington, North Carolina. And they're pushing the pile. And they've got it, but whistles here. It's going to be a timeout, Time Virginia. Timeout, Virginia. That's the first charge timeout of the half. Media timeout. Now, we're going to take a break, but on the other side, I want to ask you about that timeout and the timing of that. Let's get to that in a moment. We might stay here, actually. Yeah, very interesting. So let, let's a, let's ask you that. What what did you make of them calling a timeout when it looks like they were ready to roll? Yeah, I think when you're third and a yard or a yard and a half, that's a call it up play and you just run it no matter what. So very interesting that they call timeout right there. We'll be back in a moment. You're coming up. They're not going to go with the tush push anymore. They're going to go on this third and one in a more traditional set. Now everyone's flexing out, including Malachi Field to the boundary. Musket hands it off to Pace. Stood up by Maui Noah, but pushes forward enough to get the first down. Kobe Pace keeping the legs churning and gets the first down for the Hoos. That was all Kobe Pace and right guard Ty Furnish, who's been playing a lot better. Way to go get the first down right there. Play action for Musket down the middle it is caught and complete near the marker to Malik Washington Cameron Kitchens in coverage there and they're going to give him the first down if I'm coach Gridry I'm considering going to the Megatron rule where you double team Malik Washington must get again play action on a slant to Malik Washington again and he may have enough for another first down at the 35 yard line they're going to say yes he's by far Tony Musket's favorite target you see, they move them all over the field, and they continue to find success. Washington's 600-yard game of his career ties a school record. Pace up the middle. Actually, they were going to say he was short on the first down by a few inches, so Pace picks up the first down now. When this Virginia team finds success on first down, they are dangerous offensively. Musket dropped back. Fires over the middle. He's got another receiver. It is caught and completed for another first down. It is Malik Washington again. Miami continuing to be aggressive, playing a lot of zone. And right now, Des Kitchen just doing an unbelievable job of calling a lot of zone beaters but to also beat the blitz as well. And he continues to be able to find Malik Washington, and he shows his toughness every single time. 14-yard gain on that play. Hollins in the backfield. Musket changing the play at the line of scrimmage. First down and 10 from the 17. Hollins up the gut and taken down inside the 10 yard line. Corey Flagg brings him down. Did we expect anything different right there with, you know, Mike Hollins last week, three touchdowns. Today already a touchdown in the red area. Eight-yard gain. They hand it off to Hollins again on the slow delay, but not much there. A better Jafari job. Harvey and K.J. Cloyd take him down. A better job Miami's defense right there. Blitzen bringing safety pressure as well. As we saw James Williams come down in the box to fill a gap. Third and four 
for the Cavaliers. Third time in the red zone for Virginia. Mike Hollins in the backfield. Musket changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Three receivers out there. Wilson and Washington to the, to the left. Fields to the right. Now Washington in motion. Musket keeps it. And is able to pick up a good chunk of change there. A four-yard gain gives them another first down. James Williams brings him down. James Williams coming from a... Coming from a safety position, blitzing off the edge and really chasing that down. It could have been a touchdown, but it was only a couple yards gained. Let's see what this Miami defense, if they're able to recuperate right now, reset like we saw them do a week ago with Clemson, because there's still a lot of football to go when you're down here in the red area. 12th play of the drive, Musket hands it off to Hollins. Nothing doing on that side. Cam Kitchens, the first man on the scene. Cam just does an unbelievable job of recognizing run right there. He's just able to shoot the gap and, and have a, a great stop right there to bring up second down. 5.15 to go in the third quarter. Virginia moving the ball methodically. A one-yard loss on that last play. Tony Musket. He's a tough kid, man. Again, playing with a busted AC joint on his non-throwing shoulder. Musket in trouble, spins out, throws off his back foot. It is caught at the five-yard lines by Joshua Rawlings, the tight end, but only a one-yard gain. Really good job right now by this Miami defense. And that's what happens when you get closer to the red area. You're able to play zone, but also blitz because you could use the, that back end zone line basically like an extra defender. These windows are a lot tight, smaller, and the quarterback has to be perfect with his timing and get his ball out of their hands as fast as possible. Third and goal from the six, 14th play of the drive. Virginia, seven of 12 on third downs today. Washington in motion. Musket to pass. In trouble, flushed out of the pocket and throws it away. Intended for Malik Washington to Corey Couch in coverage. And Miami's defense holds them to a field goal attempt. It took all 11 right there on those last three plays inside the 10. You've got to be stingy and you have to find a way to, to throw off the timing of the quarterback. So great job on the back end of this defense by Miami, but also an even better job being able to create pressure and not allow Tony Musket to stay on one spot. So a heck of a job by all 11 players on this Miami defense. Will Betridge, a 23-yard field goal attempt. A South Florida kid from Gulliver Prep. Canes fans will know that. The high school that Sean Taylor went to, and the field goal is good. So Virginia gets within four with under four to play in the third quarter. Virginia doing what they need to do to stay in this game. They have moved the ball throughout the game fairly well on this Miami defense. Yeah, just their offensive line has come out and they've accepted the challenge of this Miami defense and this fast defensive line. But what's been the, the outlier and what stood apart is Tony Musket. You continue to talk about this young man. He has been unbelievable since coming back from busting up that AC joint. He continues to show his toughness and be the heartbeat of this Virginia team. Matt Ganyard, the kickoff specialist, six-year player, senior, from Coronado, California. Down near San Diego, Rashard Smith and Ray Ray Joseph awaiting the kick. This possession, Miami has to figure out a way to eat some clock and find some more running success running the football. Ganyard pops it up. Joseph to field it inside his 20. He's got room to run, and you see the speed as he turns on the Jets as he's tackled from behind near the 45-yard line. And Miami will start their next drive in really good field position after the 30-yard return. Micah Gatney takes him down near the 45. And the Miami injured player near midfield 
is being attended to. And it is. I believe it's Ray Ray Joe in the locker room. Worth noting as the Canes try and get him back out on the field. Most impactful player and the highlight so far for Miami today. Thank you, Marilyn. Mark Fletcher takes the handoff. Jonas Senker takes him down at the line of scrimmage as Miami will have second down and 10 from the 45 yard line. Jonas Senker comes in like a heat seeking missile from that free safety position. He loves to play around the line of scrimmage. He's their most physical guy on the back end for this UVA defense. Right there, just a great play by him making that stop. Tyler Harrell checks in for Miami on the boundary on the right side. He's a speedster. They like him to stretch the field. Van Dyke pump fakes, fires over the head of Restrepo. Double coverage there. Hardy and Sanker were both back there with Restrepo. Restrepo is certainly the safety valve for Van Dyke as third down and 10 is coming up for the Canes. Yeah, a bit surprised that Tyler Van Dyke went to Restrepo right there. The safety has inside leverage on Restrepo, so that's going to be a hard throw. So a bit surprised that he tried to get it to Restrepo right there. Four receivers set for Miami. Van Dyke with plenty of time over the middle, and it's picked off. Picked off by Cam Robinson. Robinson gets upended near midfield by Mark Fletcher. And Van Dyke just sailed one and put it right in Robinson's belly. A 17-yard return for the Virginia Cavaliers, and they are not going away. When you haven't found success running the football, you allow the defense to keep your eyes on you the whole entire time. Right there, Cam Robinson, unbelievable play, but Miami hasn't stressed the run game. They haven't been able to move this defense and get them to look at different things. So just an unbelievable job of this young man playing man-to-man -man coverage and being able to see Tyler Van Dyke the whole entire time and make a play on the football. A great job by the freshman Cam Robinson right there for this Virginia defense. Virginia coming out in an empty set, diamond formation at the top. They smell blood. Tony Musket. Quick toss, finds his man, Malachi Fields, dragging defenders. Daryl Porter takes him down just shy of the first down. It'll be an eight-yard gain for Malachi Fields. And they've got an incredible complement there at wide receiver between Fields and Washington. Obviously, Washington in the slot is so slippery. And speaking of slippery, Paris Jones slipping through some tackles and breaking into the secondary as he gets taken down. Inside the 25, near the 20 yard line, Noah Josie with an excellent block there along the offensive line, an 18 yard gain. Yeah, Mikhail Boldy does his job at the left tackle position as well. Musket got plenty of time, now flushed out of the pocket, sidearms one, and it is caught by Fields. Cam Kitchens standing him up, five yard gain. This Virginia team. They are confident after the last two weeks. They beat William and Mary, but they beat North Carolina the first time they've beaten a team in the top 10 on the road. And what we're seeing is Virginia's offense. They're forcing this defense to run sideline to sideline right now. Paris Jones taken down. Short gain there to about the 15 yard line. It's always interesting to see when Des Kitchens decides to run the ball in between the tackles because they've found a lot of success stretching this defense horizontally today and forcing DBs to basically make tackles and try to figure out how to make tackles out there in space. Virginia fourth time in the red zone, third and three for Musket and company. Washington in motion. Musket. Pocket collapsing. Musket stays on his feet, tosses it to Paris Jones, and Paris Jones picks up the first down. Paris Jones, the leader of that running back group with a six-yard gain. 
Tony Musket continues to show you how elusive he is. He continues to show you his athletic ability. But I think the most impressive thing today has been his eyes always being downfield, trying to look for that guy to come open late. Jaden Wayne with the pressure there for Miami, but could not wrap up Musket. Musket is elusive, as you mentioned. Musket on this drive, three of three for 29 yards, and Mike Hollins checks in in the backfield. They hand it off to Hollins, off right tackle. Hollins lowers the shoulder, dives, and they're going to say it's a touchdown. A 10-yard score for Mike Hollins, his second of the game. And Virginia takes the lead here in Miami. Rolling on the field for the touchdown. Mike Hollins does what he does all the time. He's that, he's the red zone killer. It's very close, but Jaden Wayne, number 18 for Miami, has to do a better job of keeping contained and setting the edge and not giving Mike Hollins that outside right there. Now, that's a touchdown. I mean, his hand is on the ground, but he gets the pylon. That's a touchdown. Yep. Let's take one more look. If it stands, it's Mike Hollins' fifth touchdown in his last two games. He's been unbelievable for this Virginia offense. And it's going to stand. Betridge for the extra point. Betridge, extra point is right down the pipe. What we're seeing, George, we're seeing this Virginia team finally create an identity offensively. When we get inside the 15, we're going to turn around and hand the ball off to Mike Hollins and let him do what he does. We're going to put it on the offensive line and let the offensive line be physical. So a great job by Des Kitchen. Injured in that tragedy in Charlottesville. When asked about exceeding expectations, all the coaches Des Kitchings, Tony Elliott, said considering what he's been through and what he's had to overcome, there's no question it's him. Yeah, going from not knowing if he's going to play football ever again to five rushing touchdowns in two weeks. Tyler Harrell now back there. Ray Ray Joseph was hurt on the last play. Harrell bounces off his hands. Miami has to pick it up. And they are taken down at the five-yard line. Michael Redding the third with the heady play there. I don't know what Tyler Harrell was thinking there. Just let it go through the end zone. Yeah, if I'm Coach Cristobal, I'm furious right now with Tyler Harrell because you can let that football go right through the end zone and just not worry about it. Right there, you cannot afford to make that mistake trying to catch that football. So Miami starts deep in their territory at the six-yard line after the mistake by Tyler Harrell from Christopher Columbus High School, the same high school Mario Cristobal went to. 19 seconds left here in the third quarter. Fletcher with a run, cuts back inside. A six-yard gain, approximately. And Miami will run out the third quarter clock here, potentially. But will they one, run one more play? And they will. Fletcher again up the middle. And Jason Hammond, the freshman for Virginia from Pembroke Pines, Florida, and St. Thomas Aquinas takes him down. And that's the end of the third quarter. Virginia up 20 to 17 here at Hard Rock. Third Miami, third and two for the Canes at their own 14 yard line. Empty backfield as Van Dyke drops back. And it is caught and complete to Jacoby George for a first down near the 20-yard line. Earlier, Marilyn Payne caught up with Coach Cristobal. for the Coach Cristobal interview. First down and 10 for Miami from their own 21. Virginia showing blitz, and then they back off. Van Dyke with time, throws a high ball there, but Jacoby George skies up and gets it. Picks up a couple of yards. Cohen King 
is the tackler there after the five-yard game. It's Kobe George showing some consistency for Tyler Van Dyke. He's been rattled all day. So I like that Kobe George, a guy that's played a ton of football for this Miami offense, coming up big right there for Tyler Van Dyke. Hopefully he settles down for this fourth quarter. Second and five, Mark Fletcher in the backfield for Miami. Restrepo in motion. Cristobal running down the sideline behind the official. The Canes drain the play clock and then go up the middle for another short game. Third down and two coming up after a three yard gain by Fletcher. Makai Buchanan, the tackler. Yeah, going to be very interesting to see what Shannon Dawson decides to do right here on the last couple third downs. Miami has chose to go five wide with an empty backfield both times, which ended up in easy throws and catches. So hope, we'll see what they do right here if they live in that world again. Third and two from their own 29, four wide receiver set. So not an empty Orlando, but four receivers. A toss. Over to the right side, incomplete intended for Restrepo. A lot of traffic there as Jonas Senker got a hand on it. I thought that one was very interesting. Jonas Senker might have got away with something right there. Thought he arrived a little bit early and tried to go through Restrepo to get that PBU, but the ref might have missed it. And Miami looks like they're getting ready to punt. Fourth and two in Miami, as you mentioned, will punt. No penalties today on Virginia. And Ethan Davies set to receive at his own 30. Dylan Joyce with the punt, the soccer-style punt. Davies will field it and is tackled immediately at the 26-yard line. Jaden Harris with the tackle after a 46-yard punt. Virginia with the lead and looking to tack on more. and company have done a fantastic job of controlling the tempo of this game. They have 10 more minutes of time of possession at the moment. Musket rolling to his left. Pressure coming. He takes a big hit. Francisco Maui Noah just absolutely pummeled Tony Musket and Jaden Gibson also limping on the play. Yeah, great job by Miami's defensive line being able to create some pressure, but an even better job by Francisco Maui Noah just triggering and saying coming downhill to force Tony Musket to throw that ball a little earlier than he would have liked to. Second and 10. Virginia from their own 26 yard line. When we spoke to coaches earlier this week, they want Musket to spread the ball around. They hand it off. Trying to find room on the right side, and not much there for Mike Hollins as Francisco Maui Noah, again, the transfer from Washington State, is doing yeoman's work out there. Third down upcoming for Virginia, third and long. Yeah, and this is where it gets tough for Virginia. They want to stay ahead on down a distance. They want to live in that third and short world. Going against this Miami defense that is fast sideline to sideline, these third and nines are almost impossible. So let's see if they could get the ball out of Tony Musket's hands as fast as possible, because I'm sure this Miami defense is trying to get home. Kane's crowd amping up. Musket got time. Now pressure coming, and he's wrapped up and sacked inside the 20-yard line. Branson Dean, the transfer from Purdue. Throw it up the U after an eight-yard loss, and Virginia will be forced to punt. Yeah, talking to Coach Gidry today, this week he talked about the movement, that this offensive line might struggle with movement. And you see Branson Dean, a nice little ET stunt, and he's able to get home right there. Way to go, big fella. Way to make a big play for your team when they need you. Miami's fifth sack of the game. Sparks to punt it. He fields it at his own five. Restrepo awaiting the punt. Will fair catch it at the 41-yard line. Miami trailing by three. Their offense trying to put up some more points on this one. Miami trailing by three. If you're Virginia now, you've got this three-point lead. What are you thinking of your Tony Elliott squad here, Orlando? It's all about the D-line. you got to continue to be outstanding. You've been great today being able to force Miami in bad situations. 
So hopefully they can finish off the game the same way. A bad situation there for Van Dyke, but he makes it into a good situation as he turned around to the wrong side. Or at least the running back may have lined up on the wrong side, but he gets it over to Colby Young for a big first down. No running back back there. And he said, you know what? I'm just going to fling it. 19-yard completion and a first down. Yeah, welcome to the party. Colby Young with that 6'5 body frame is able to get in the middle of this Virginia defense and explode for 19 on that one. Him and Parrish not on the same page. They had a quick conversation here as they come out of the huddle. Miami first and 10 from the 40-yard line of Virginia. Van Dyke, a toss to the boundary. It is caught by Jacoby George. Cohen King drags him out of bounds, flips him out. A four-yard gain. Nice curl route right there by Jacoby George. That's what we've seen. There's been three times today that Tyler Van Dyke and Jacoby George have hooked up on that same route because of how Virginia plays their set corners. They play off in coverage, so that those underneath things are going to be there. Second and six for Miami on the 36-yard line of Virginia. Virginia showing blitz. They back off. Van Dyke with time. Launches one over the middle, and it is picked off again. No, he dropped it. Cohen King had it in his hands and could not hold on. The pass intended for Jacoby George, and Tyler Van Dyke gets away with one there. He gets lucky right there. And I don't know if this is just Tyler Van Dyke just thinking that somebody's going to get open or, or he, Kobe Young is going to or or Jacoby George is going to make a play but he has to be able to see the safety sinking right there and maybe take advantage of the outside the middle of the field is, has been closed all day every time he's went in there it's been very close to either being tipped or going in the other direction Miami has not been in the red zone today Van Dyke a toss to the sideline complete to Cam McCormick Jonas Senker with the tackle there. Cam McCormick uses every bit of that 6'5 body frame right there to catch that one on the sideline. And a field goal attempt now for Miami as they will be shy of the first down. A field goal attempt of a... It's going to be a long attempt here. Yeah, it's about 50 yards right here, right on the money. It is 50. Good eye, partner. And Miami looking to tie. Borregales a big leg. Borregales right down the pipe. We are knotted up at 20. Borregales now two of three from 50 plus. I like the decision right there. Borregales a heck of a kick, 50 yards right there. And you should be fired up because that's a big time kick right there. Now it's all about in the next nine minutes, who wins the next nine minutes and 26 seconds for both of these A piece between Virginia and Miami. Miami with a field goal there by Andres Borregales of 50 yards, ties it up. Virginia has been in control of this game, though, from a time of possession standpoint. And they are set to receive here with under 9.30 to go. Washington lets it sail over his head. And Virginia... For a quarterback call it up design draw or two for this Virginia offense because they have found success the last couple weeks running that empty set here for Virginia first and 10 from their own 25 musket he's going to tuck it and run but he's not going to be able to get away as Jared Harrison Hunt the fifth year senior from New York brings him down I thought Tony musket was just a half a second late right there pulling it down with that decision because there was some daylight on the right. Tempo, and they find Malik Washington on the slant. He picks up the first down, but he gets absolutely leveled by James Williams. He paid for that catch, an 11-yard gain. Oh, my goodness. Malik Washington continues to show you how outstanding of a wide receiver he is, catching the ball and being able to absorb the contact. Kobe Pace on the left side finds room to run. Seven-yard gain for Pace. And that's when this Virginia offense is at its best, when they're able to keep the defense. Timeout injured Miami player. When they're able to keep the defense on their heels. Media timeout. Jared Harrison Hunt right there, a little bit banged up right there. We'll pause for an update. Was good to go on the sidelines, it looks like, tended to by the staff. We'll see if he gets back in the game, but glad that he walked off on his own power. George Sedano, Orlando Franklin, Marilyn Payne with you here. Second and two for Virginia. 
Kobe Pace in the backfield. Takes the run and tackled immediately by James Williams. No gain on the play. James Williams does a great job coming down from the safety position to make a play in the backfield. But right now, if I'm offensive coordinator, Des Kitchen, I have to have my best third down play up right here to find a way to recapture the momentum before the injury timeout because that's when this team is rolling, when they're able to keep Miami on their heels. Third and two for Virginia. Malik Washington in the slot to Corey Couch right on him. They hand it off up the middle, and Miami is going to stop him. Branson Dean, first on the scene for the University of Miami. And a decision here on no gain for Tony Elliott's squad. And the offense is on the field still. Yeah, there's still a lot of time left in this game with over seven minutes. But Miami, great job with just the interior pressure right there. Good versus good. Who wants it more? And it looks like Virginia's getting ready to go for it on fourth down. Fourth and three for Virginia. Miami crowding the line of scrimmage. Washington in motion. Musket has time over the middle. It is caught by Malachi Fields at the 40-yard line. And he's barreling through tacklers as he gets inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. James Williams brings him down after a 17-yard gain. And Tony Musket, man, what a pass. Yeah, Malachi Fields does a great job catching that and absorbing the contact over the middle. Musket to the sideline, throws it away. Just an unbelievable job on the previous play of Tony Musket, understanding the situation, but surveying the field until he finds Malachi Fields. And Malachi Fields coming up big once again for his quarterback. Malachi Fields, his fifth catch for 63 yards. Paris Jones in the backfield for Virginia. Second and 10 from the 37. Low snap. Musket. He's going to keep it. And he's got plenty of room to run and blocking. And he dives forward inside the 25-yard line to the 23. Another first down. He was averaging over eight yards a carry on those QB draws. Got 14 there. Dows it up at the perfect time right after just just catches Miami in a situation where they're not blitzing and Tony Musket continues to show you that man I am tough I will put this thing on my back unbelievable job following this left guard Noah Josie up there to go get another first down six minutes to go in this one Virginia driving looking to take the lead here in Miami Musket changing the play at the line of scrimmage Miami showing blitz now they back off Washington in motion Musket surveying the field, throws over the middle, incomplete, intended for Dakota Twitty. A little behind him, and he got leveled as well. Yeah, Porter comes up and make it, it makes a nice hit, but Tony Musket just, just had to lead it, a li just, just put it on him a little bit better right there. And, you know, Twitty would be able to catch that and secure it and also protect himself and turn the ball up the field. Yeah. This is where it starts to get sticky, these second and tens for this Virginia offense. Harrison Hunt is back in the game. I thought Twitty, that looked more behind him from the angle we're looking at from this booth. That thing hit him near the chest. Probably should have caught that one. Should have went for it with two hands. Musket going forward and taken down near the line of scrimmage. Jafari Harvey, the fifth-year senior from Port St. Lucie. Good job by Coach Guidry's defense right there. You know, they were burnt a little earlier on this drive with the quarterback draw. But a great job understanding the situation on that last one, being able to stop it to bring up a third and long. This is where you want to live if you're Miami's defense. If you're Virginia, I think this would probably be the perfect time to call a screen play to, one, to your running back because of how aggressive this Miami defense has been today. Third and 11. Musket scrambling. He's got room to run. Williams trying to get him, but not in time. Wait, wait. He may have stepped out short of that first down marker. Let's see. 
think he's about two yards short of that thing. He is. He has been marked out at the 15-yard line, an eight-yard gain. James Williams did get there in time. What a job by Williams coming across the field. Yeah, a great job by Williams, but an even better job of Tony Musket being patient to find that seam to now bring up this fourth and two. They're going to kick the field goal with Betridge, a 32-yard attempt. The field goal is good. Virginia with a three-point lead, 4.20 to go. If you are Mario Cristobal, what are you telling Tyler Van Dyke? He has not had the greatest of games. I got to put it on the offensive line, put it on the run game. I got to, if I'm Mario Cristobal, I'm going up to every person on this offense and saying, we have to be active in the run game. It's going to take everybody, wide receivers cracking on linebackers, cracking on safeties in order to get this done. But if I'm Tony Elliott, I'm feeling really, really good right now because my team has been the better conditioned football team, but also my defense has found a way to force Tyler Van Dyke into making rush decisions and making mistakes out there today. Virginia has had 76 total plays, Miami 44. Let's send it down to Maryland. Mario Cristobal's message to his team this fourth quarter is very simple. Dig in, and Orlando, exactly as you said, this will take everybody. He said, we need to play the fourth quarter like we started the third. That's turnovers, that's points, any way we can get them, and everybody has to dig in. Thank you, Maryland. Again, no Elijah Arroyo or A.J. Allen, who had performed very well for Miami, including a touchdown, out with injuries. Ganyard kicks it. Miami fields it, Brashard Smith. And he is tackled at the 28-yard line. Josh Ahern, the man to bring him down. So Miami will begin their drive there. And you're an old offensive lineman. You played at the University of Miami. Mario Cristobal recruited you. Yep. So I feel like you've got a pretty good idea of what's going to happen here. We've seen them dominate the line of scrimmage last week against Clemson. And this week, mixed results so far yeah Tyler Van Dyke has been off today you know with his precision and where he's placing the ball so for me just having that old offensive lineman in me I'm telling coach Chris Ball let's run the ball let me go out here and take care of business and try to get us a win and they're gonna drop back to pass Van Dyke spins out of trouble for the moment throws a dangerous pass to Parrish who catches it and he is taken down after a first down there, an 11-yard gain to the 39-yard line. Paul Akiri with the pressure on Van Dyke, but Van Dyke comes up big. Yeah, not how you designed it, but Van Dyke keeps his eyes downfield the whole entire time and is able to find Paris for a first down. Henry Parrish hurt last week, did not play. Van Dyke, first down, hands it off to Parrish, trying to get the corner, cannot. He'll lose a yard. Akiri again making a play. The 2022 All-Academic ACC player. And he is performing on the field as well as you saw last week at North Carolina and here right Great job of taking Francis Marino and setting the edge and not allowing the running back to get the edge on that outside play and stretching it to have a, a tackle for a loss and bring up second and 11. The freshman from American Heritage, Fletcher in the backfield now on second and 11. They dump it to Fletcher in the flat. Cam Robinson is able to bring him down, but a short gain there of only three yards. It's going to be third and long for Miami at their own 42. Yeah, right now, if I'm Coach Dawson, I'm looking at some kind of deep crossing routes in the middle of the field, you know, about 15 to 20 yards down the field. That's where they found their success earlier in this game, and that's what Virginia has given up to Miami, not allowing anybody to go deep over the top. Third and eight for Miami. Van Dyke got time. He finds Colby Young at midfield. Is it going to be enough for the first down? It looks like it's going to be close. Jonas Sanker dragged him down, and they are going to give him enough for the first down. And that is good on good right there. Jonas Sanker, Colby Young. If there's any other DB for Virginia, and that's that might end up in a missed tackle. But Jonas Sanker always shows his physicality, being able to stop him in his tracks right at the marker right there. Two minutes to go in this one. Miami at midfield. Van Dyke. Pressure coming. Throws it. Caught by Restrepo near the sideline. 
Another first down for Restrepo and the Canes. Jonas Sanker pushes him out of bounds. Miami will stop the clock with one minute and 50 seconds to go. 19-yard gain. You know, that's a big-time throw, that out route, that deep out route to the sideline. That's an NFL-type throw by Tyler Van Dyke right there to Restrepo. First and 10 from the 31 of Virginia. Van Dyke with time over the middle. Incomplete. Cam McCormick could not hold on as James Jackson wedged his way in there for the incompletion. Yeah, we're just watching Restrepo, just a deep fake, you know, puts his foot in the ground, is able to get to the sidelines. But TVD, just an unbelievable pass in a tight window right there to complete a long throw to the sideline right there. 1.45 to go. Second and 10 for the Canes. Four wide receivers. Smith in motion. Van Dyke, he's got time, sidearms it to Smith. Smith trying to make a man miss, and he is dragged out of bounds by Cam Robinson. The fans want a flag for a horse collar, but I don't think they're going to get it. It's going to be third down for Miami. Yeah, that's a freshman right there, Cam Robinson. Hasn't played a ton of football at the college foot at college level, but an unbelievable talent as he shows you that he's able to get Rashad Smith out of bounds right there. Normally, you see wide receivers take that and be able to edge linebackers, but you see Cam Robinson with his athleticism be able to bring up this third and eight. Third and eight for Miami on Virginia's 29. Van Dyke, five of six on this drive for 42 yards. Smith in motion again. Here comes the pressure. Van Dyke running for his life. And he throws it. It is caught by Brashard Smith near the original line of scrimmage. Mackay Buchanan with the pressure on Van Dyke. And it's going to be a Borregales long field goal attempt. Officially a one-yard loss on that play. Smith might have been better suited dropping it, to be honest with you, and letting it sail out of bounds. Yeah, just batting that one down right there. 48-yard field goal attempt for Borregales. He's nailed a couple, including a 50-yarder earlier. The kick is up and good. And Borregales continues to put up points on the board. He is 15 for 16 this season. He is an absolute weapon for them. Yeah, really seeing the toughness of both of these football teams. Both of them coming off huge wins last year, week. And wouldn't you rather, would you rather any other way, coming down to a minute and 23 seconds, being tied up? I think both these teams have played outstanding. And let's see what happens. But, I mean, Bork Ellis lights out, right? I mean, the last two to keep Miami in this thing, they haven't been easy chip shot field goals at all. Not the case for sure. The junior from Champagnat Catholic High School in Miami. I don't know which campus he went to, though. Champagnat had multiple campuses, including one in Hialeah. Nice. I didn't know that there, partner. There you go. We well, get some South Florida knowledge there. Yeah, I learned something new every day with you, baby. Well, I showed you Miramar on the uh, Goodyear blimp. I would have never knew that was Miramar. Yeah. From well, the and also, they had the big water tower there that said Miramar, so it's not like I knew it just off my eye. I, I just knew that Miramar was there, and we don't normally see Miramar shots, which, by the way, is right next to the stadium. Borregales with the kickoff. We are tied up at 23. Sails through the end zone. Washington, excuse me, Washington lets it sail through the end zone. And Virginia right now. Tony Musket and company. Trying to win this one. Paris Jones in the backfield. This is the world that Virginia wants to live in because they have had so much success today being in that hurry up mode. And you'll have to be in hurry up being under a minute and a half. Jones up the middle. Weaving through traffic. A huge run there for Paris Jones as he's taken down at the 45-yard line. A 20-yard gain. Blake Steen with an excellent block from the right tackle position. This offensive line has got the job done for UVA today, but Jones, unbelievable, weaving through traffic on that last one. Miami dropping into coverage. They throw quickly, and immediately Malachi Fields was met by Daryl Porter on a medium gain there. This is where UVA wants to live. They love the up-tempo, and they've been able to capitalize and expose Miami a little bit today. Do it running it. Musket on second down, throws it away. 
intended for J.R. Wilson but smartly just tosses it away and Jaden Davis in coverage 42 seconds left on the clock third and six for Virginia yeah if I'm Des Kitchens I'm going five wide right here George quarterback draw I've been finding success I'm putting it on my the toughest guy on my football team Tony Musket out there with a banged up shoulder and he is playing lights out they go four wide on third and six. Miami bringing pressure. And they get there. They sack Tony Musket. Ruben Bain Jr., the freshman phenom for Miami, comes up big in the biggest moment. But a flag on the play. It's going to be very interesting to see what happened and what the flag is right here. As we see KJ Cloud just, KJ Floyd just, you know, flopping down. So he might think that it, he might believe it might be on him right there. Sixth sack of the game for Miami. We'll see what the laundry is about as the referees and the officials are chatting it up. Number seven is now number 37 for Miami. I guess they're picking up the flag. Yeah, I guess so. We don't have an explanation, but we'll just <laughs> go with that. Xavier Miami's Rich defense able to get what get done what they need to get done right there. Let's see if Tony Elliott's defensive club could do the same thing to force an overtime. Miami holds, and Xavier Restrepo is awaiting the punt from Daniel Sparks at his own 15. Sparks punts it from his 30. A high spiraling punt. Restrepo lets it bounce and it'll go into the end zone. Miami will begin their drive with 27 seconds left at their 20 yard line. A 57 yard punt. Miami has all three timeouts. Yeah, if you're Shannon Dawson, the offensive coordinator, you got to be thinking about working the sidelines right now, right? You want quick, easy throws for Tyler Van Dyke to try to get push the ball down the field. You don't have to go get it all right now. There's still a lot of times where you have to be able to work the sidelines. Yeah, they definitely got to work the sidelines, but with the three timeouts, they've got the ability to play with it in the middle of the field. And don't forget, under two minutes, the rules have changed. Yep. They don't stop at every first down here in college anymore, but under two minutes in the second and fourth quarter, it will stop to reset the chains. And it looks like Miami's gonna kneel this. And they are. Wow. They will go into overtime. Decision. Well, that was the same decision or a similar decision that they had against Clemson last week. Yeah, the crowd didn't like it then, they don't like it now, but it ended up working in their favor. But like you said, with the three timeouts right there, just needing a field goal, I was sh I'm shocked right there, just kneeling it. But Miami is coming off a overtime win, a, two, a double overtime win, like a Clemson last week. So you have to think that your team might be a little bit better prepared for it than Virginia is. Overtime between Miami and Virginia. Extra football coming your way. Try to get the ball to number seven as often as possible. Mish in motion. Musket. Got time. Throws it out of bounds. Looks like a miscommunication with Malachi Fields, Daryl Porter in coverage. Last year, let's not forget, these two teams played the longest game in each of their history in a quadruple overtime game. Yeah, lots of snaps last year for both of these teams. But this year, both teams completely different as they have kind of restructured both of themselves offensively and defensively. A lot better football talent for both clubs. Second down and 10 from the 25. Washington in motion, play action. Must get in trouble, throws it to Hollins. Not much there. Cam Kitchens right on the spot to limit the gain to only two for Mike Hollins. The pressure there by K.J. Cloyd, the junior from Columbia, Mississippi, a transfer from Louisville. Cam Kitchens just shows you why he's one of the leaders on this defense. His ability to close right there to make it a minimal gain is outstanding, and it's unmatched in college football, his speed that he plays with. Third and eight for Virginia. Washington in motion. Musket over the middle. It is caught by Washington, but leveled immediately short of the sticks. 
James Williams stops Washington after a five-yard gain. James Williams, he shows you the physicality, lowering the boom. That big body frame, 6'5", 215, and he can run like a gazelle out there. Unbelievable right there, being able to convert and take Malachi Washington, Malik Washington down, short of the sticks. Will Betridge, 35-yard field goal attempt from the right hash. A Miami native from Gulliver Prep for Virginia at kicker. The kick is up, and he splits the uprights. Virginia with a three-point lead. Miami will get the ball next. Orlando, let's start with Virginia and what they need to do defensively with what you expect Miami to do here. I think Virginia, it's about just expected to win. You know, for 60 minutes, they've found ways to create pressure on Tyler Van Dyke by only rushing four guys majority of the time. You don't have to turn this into a blitz fest. You can force this Miami offense to make a mistake. I think if you're in Virginia, you're in the driver's seat right now and make the plays when they come to you. Two tight ends for Miami. Mark Fletcher in the backfield. Van Dyke has been shaky at times here, again, dealing with a hand and leg injury. Virginia showing pressure, now backing off. Van Dyke hands it off to Fletcher. Fletcher up the middle, pushing the pile, keeps his legs churning and gets close to the first down marker. About an eight and a half yard gain, Jameer Carter finally brings him down. Just Cohen, Matt Lee, Arnez Cooper, the inside three taking care of business right there, imposing their will to bring up a second and one. They'll give him nine officially. Second and one. Again, Miami with a big set out there. Fletcher again bounces it out to the outside. And taken down after a first down by Cohen King. Taken down at about the 12 yard line, somewhere between the 11 and the 12. The freshman Mark Fletcher Jr. shows his patience right there, reading it out one gap at a time, gets to the edge and uses his speed to convert and move the chains. First down for Miami, ball officially spotted at the 11. Fletcher in the backfield, the freshman from American Heritage. First game back off of injury. Virginia showing blitz. Fletcher trying to stretch it out to the outside. Stays on his feet! And gets in the end zone! Miami with the backbreaker and the victory! An 11 yard touchdown! They're going to review it, but the official did signal touchdown. Again, there has to be indisputable evidence. What do you see here, partner? Big left guard, J Javonny Cohen, pulls out front, but Mark Fletcher tight roping the sidelines. That's an unbelievable balance, keeping himself in to go secure the touchdown right there. Javion Cohen with a good block there, leading the way for Fletcher. And as you mentioned, partner, just a heck of a job by the young freshman to stay in bounds. Miami taking care of business using the run game. And like I say, I like to say, George, those runs early in the game when they're only two and three yards, you hope that you just continue to deliver the body blows so later on in the game they can turn into bigger plays. And we saw for this Miami offense, those runs turned into bigger plays. Here's the touchdown again. Unbelievable body control. Wow. Miami with the walk off against Virginia. An unbelievable game by both of these teams. I know there's no moral victories, but if I'm Tony Elliott, I'm feeling pretty good about my football team. The last couple of weeks of play, they came down here in Miami, was able to rattle Tyler Van Dyke, was able to find success, and this is another stepping stone for this Virginia team.